that's it. It's journey time. And it's time for another creative journey using Stampin' Up! products. Hello everyone. My name is Kathy Haynes. And today we are going to take a creative journey using electrical circuitry. <laughs> Does that sound fun? Exclamation mark. So here's the card we're going to make. We're using the Campology stamp set. And it says, you brighten my path. What do you think of that? So this is a light up card using copper wire. So it's adhesive copper wire and um, batteries. So you're using three volt lithium batteries. And we are gonna create a circuit board and it is way easier than it sounds. Okay, so this would make a great, there's the circuit board. This would make a great Father's Day card, or you can also, I turned it into a, an, a graduation card for my grandson. And so instead of you brighten my path, I put adventure awaits from the beautiful world stamp set. And then I put congratulations on this, this new beginning on the inside. So this is a great masculine card that you could use for Father's Day, a, ma a masculine birthday, graduation, whatever you could think of. So let's go ahead and get started and I'll show you how this doesn't hurt at all. Alrighty, so the first thing we're gonna do is, this is Mellow Moss cardstock. I've cut a um, eight and a half by 11 sheet in half at four and a quarter, so it's four and a quarter by 11 in, four and a quarter by 11 inches and I've scored at four and a half and five and a half and now I'm going to fold that over and crease it with my bone folder. I have a new bone folder. The other one I've had for at least 15 years so I thought it was time to get something bright and shiny. Okay so this card as you can see is called a book fold but we're not going to glue the sides together yet to make that. First, we're going to um, stamp and put our um, trees from Campology. And that's the set right here. And I've already done the, the front part here, but I didn't do this part yet. So I'm gonna do this really quick uh, with the only stamping block I have here. I'm gonna use Use old olive or a, a mossy me or a mellow moss and stamp this up. And I like to do first and second generation. So stamp once and then move it, stamp again. And then maybe another time down here just to fill it in. That's how easy it is. And then I'm going to adhere this. All the dimensions will be below. So don't feel like you have to remember anything at this part. And I'm also going to include the supply list of everything you need with links to where I bought my copper wire and my batteries also. And this on here. Now you might choose to sponge this whole thing. I am going to, I did it, should have done it ahead of time, but I'm going to use my blending brush and some crumb cake. just add some sponging here. Okay, and I'm also gonna sponge. I've already stamped the trees on this one. And I love these blending brushes. I'm doing another video this week that you cannot miss with the pansies using Stamping Up's blending brushes. And the results are phenomenal. Okay, stamp off. There we go. So we have a rustic more look. And I always do it on top of acetate um, so that you're reusing the ink that you're blending with. Otherwise, it soaks into the paper behind it. And I'll show you an example again. And you pretty much lose the ink. All right. So now I'm going to put my side panel on. I know you're anxious to get to the fun part, the circuitry, but we have to do these little things first so that you 
have exercised your creative juices enough to when we get to the circuit board, you are in that mode. So now we're gonna set that there for a minute. We're gonna use the new Stampin' Up! twine. It comes in a set, I think, of five different colors, white, all the neutrals. And I think I just wanna wrap this around a couple of times. Whoops. And I'll stop there. Get this off. Alrighty. So we'll go ahead and open this up. Wrap this around. And then I just tied a bow, but I first started with a knot. And you can either do just a knot if little bows, which I think I'm gonna do this time for the sake of film so you don't have to see me trying to make a bow this way. Tie my knot. And pull. Okay. What did I do wrong there? Okay. Let's see. Of course, get this back up in view. So as you can see, even tying a little knot for me is getting more and more difficult with age. The little mo small motor control is out of control. Here we go. And the eyes aren't what they used to be, but here we go, we got it. So I'm gonna stick to just that. Okay, so now we have our side panel. So now we can glue this shut. So I'm gonna use tear tape so that I'm sure that it sticks well. And I'm going to put a layer here and a layer here. Alrighty. Then using my pick tool, pull this up, make it down good. There we go. Alrighty. Okay. Then simply shut that and press. And then when you open it, crease it with your tool. And there we have our book. Now we can go ahead and lay our first layer on here. And again, all the measurements will be below. So we're gonna put that on there. You may even want to sponge it or not. For the sake of the video, I want to get to the fun part. So we'll just put this on just like that, naked. All right. Now comes to the circuitry on the front. So what I've done, now we have this aside. And the best way I know to do it, especially if you're going to do it more than once, is to create a temple using window sheet or acetate. So I drew originally my circuit board and this is copper tape here and here. Okay, the circles where the light's gonna shine and this is a fold. So to get that onto my board here, I simply used a piece of carbon paper, put it face down, lined it up and then I used my, you can either use this one or you can use, um, there's another tip that has the balls and it's in the other room, but this would work too. So you got your carbon, you just press and follow those lines, all of them. And then you end up with this template. So this template is for the battery. I know that's where it's gonna go eventually. And this is where my light is gonna shine. This is where I'm gonna fold. So now I'm gonna tip over my front sentiment and I'm gonna tip this carbon side upside down and line it up, okay? So on this side, so on this side is where my light is gonna go. So I'm gonna take my bone folder and rub, rub, rub. I'm also gonna rub over here because I kinda wanna see where the battery is gonna go. So as much of it as I can, I'm gonna rub and it gives me an idea of what's going on. 
So right there is where my hole needs to go. Now I was using a 3 8 inch hole punch, but I'm gonna try a smaller one this time. So I'm using a quarter inch punch and right where that hole is, if you can see it, where it shows that the hole's gonna be, and this is on the back of this piece here, I'm gonna punch two holes. Just close to each other. You don't want it too big, okay? So there's my holes. And it doesn't matter because I am now going to stamp my lantern Sorry. out of the Campology stamp set. I'm gonna stamp it in Cherry Cobbler. Pick it up. Stamp it on a piece of scratch paper. Okay. And now I'm going to cut out my lantern. Okay. Now I don't want this top piece. So it's not that hard to cut out because you're not going to keep that wire on the top. We're going to put real wire. You'll see it in a few minutes. So cut it close as you can. And then I'm going to show you a trick to make this look even better once we stop look off there. Come back here. Some of you might be better at fussy cutting than I am. It's not my favorite thing. I didn't have kindergarten winter I lived as a child. So I did not get to cut and paste. I started school in first grade. So maybe not learning that skill at an early age has affected my fussy cutting skills. But here we go, we're almost there. I hope you're all enjoying getting back into life. We actually had company here and a party this weekend, a little kids party. It was so much fun watching the kids run and play with the goats and feed them. And... Okay, so now I have my lantern. But what I don't want is behind it to be white and I don't want to fussy cut the part behind it. So I'm gonna take the light crumb cake blend. I'm gonna use the small side and on, on the sides here, I'm gonna color that in. Okay. So it will blend in more now with the rest of the card so it won't be so stark. All right. Now I'm gonna take a cherry cobbler, the big side, and this is what I do whenever I fussy cut because it really helps hide all the flaws is I just run it across the sides and any zigzags or extra white that's showing will kind of disappear if you do this. And just slowly let it sink in a little bit as you go. Run it along the edges. And what do you think? I think it makes all the difference. It really makes it pop. So I do that whenever I'm fussy cutting. Try to use a similar color. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put, pop that up right over those holes, putting this part here that's gonna be the light part as close to those holes as possible. Okay, in fact, I'm gonna put that aside for now. We're gonna do that in a little bit. Let's go work on our circuitry. So now we have our circuit board. Okay, and I've written front on my template, so that every time I use it, I know which side is up, so you're not getting confused with being upside down. I lay it right there, so first thing I know is I'm gonna to wanna to fold it right about here and crease it. Okay, now I'm gonna get my copper tape. And I bought this on Amazon. Again, the link is in the description below. Okay, and I'm just gonna Take this off. Okay. I love my Picatool. And hold it and begin laying it down following those guides. So inside that ring and it's, when you get to the quarter, now this is important. You're gonna go out to the edge, down, no up, out to the edge, 
up and down and press right there okay and go all the way to right here now using a strong fingernail that's straight or a credit card tear that straight right there because you really want it straight now take and press this down then starting at the edge that you left off or actually I'm going to start up here in this circle I'm going to start here pulling the tape back now I want to go outside the thing and then back the direction okay and it doesn't have to be straight realizing that nobody's ever going to see your circuitry after this okay unless they tear it apart to see how you did it which is possible okay back down okay now comes the critical part you want this about an eighth of an inch apart Put right there and tear so you want that a distance between there but not further than maybe an eighth of an inch and I'm going to show you why and this will make more sense this is how I buy my diodes okay and I have a link to the Amazon that I buy them you get I think a hundred in each roll and you can buy different colors like for this one I'm going to use the white so I'm going to pop one of these out of here. Really, I am. Because I'm working on the wrong end. There. Because there's a film over the top. There, I popped one out. Now, the trick to this is using these batteries. They're three-bolt lithium batteries. I'm going to put this here. Let's do this first. And attach it. Now I want that copper wire to touch the back of my battery, but I also have to adhere it. So at this point, I'm going to use a glue dot. Let me find my glue dot. So I don't have my glue dots with me. So I'm going to use glue. I'm gonna use the Stamping Up Fine Tip Glue and I'm gonna put it on one side. Okay. Now that side, I want to be away from that copper line and just let it there to dry all right now I'm going to fold that over so that that copper right there touches that and hold it down and then if you see on the back of this I don't know how well you can see that but there's two copper strips and I'm gonna put them right here where both sides of that strip touch either end and I'm going to press on it. Now it didn't light up. So let me tip it over completely. There, do you see it flashing? So there's one direction in which this will work and you have to find that. Do you see that? So now I know that's the direction this light, is that not amazing? I just get amazed every time. So I know that's the direction I need to put it. So I'm going to slide it over carefully so I don't lose the direction. And I'm going to put a drop of glue. Now I'm going to try, I'm going to try the Stamping Up Fine Tip Glue. I've never used it before. I usually use a different glue, but I just want to put one little dot right in here. Okay, very little. And now I'm going to pick my diode up, put it on there, line it up, and this is just the hardest part, but it's really not that hard. Now I'm going to push until it lights up. Push it on, because see the trouble is that all those diodes have to touch that copper. And now it's not working. So I'm going to wipe that off and I'm going to use a different kind of glue and I hope it will work now. So let me get another diode. Oh, I'm so, let me try it again. What was I doing wrong? Anybody, comments below? Let me tell you what I was doing wrong in just a minute. That light will not work unless you are touching the battery. So, and I wasn't doing that, so. Here, I'm freaking out. Put another dot here. You just want a line in there. Got a bubble, but. Okay, so push that button down. Now put your diode on and push 
until you get it to the right side that will work nope turn it over 360 And I did use a different kind of glue last time, so I'm wondering if that's what I have to do. There we go. So you see it? The trick is remembering when you're testing it to use your other hand. So I'm gonna hold that battery, that diode down for just a couple, like maybe a minute, just to make sure that it's glued exactly in the right place. <clears throat> and I think we're almost safe to go. Let me put this back on. Okay. All right, what do you think? Keep pushing. Okay, and I used a Diamond Glaze by Judykins the first time, and I think it worked better. The, the hold was just stronger and held it stronger, because when I let go now, it's just not wanting to stay as tight to the paper as it did using the Diamond Glaze. So, I'm gonna go ahead real quick, and we'll do another one and see if that makes a difference, because just not gonna light up. So let's take another one, and I have one ready. And this will also give you a second look at how to do this. All right, so let me grab my carbon paper really quick. It is right here somewhere. Where are you, carbon paper? So not having my carbon paper with me, I'm going to go ahead and draw a diagram real quick. Where did you go? Is this it? Nope. All right. So basically, I want to fold it here. Okay, the other side. I want my battery here. And my light is going to be here. Okay, so I'm going to put my tape this way and then down that way to there. Then touching the battery over and up. So that's really the basic way it goes. And uh, let me grab my tape. I'm going to put this here. Remember out and then back in. See how fast this is, you guys? It's really not that hard to do. You do want a strong edge, so let's use this. So you have a good edge there. And you need a space in the middle where there is nothing. I've made a light-up card before with Christmas light bulbs on it. So that was a pretty big hit. So I thought this would be fun as well now that we're meeting back. Okay. Press down to make sure you have a good connection. See, it's really not hard. Fold this over. So touching that. All right. Let's take our battery off this one. And we will put it on there. I'm going to use diamond glaze. And I don't know what the difference is. I don't know if there is a difference. But it just seemed to really hold when I did it. It holds so well. That I can't get the lid off. So I have this handy. I'm going to reach in. Grab a drop. And I found this is how I did it before. So I found this was a good way of putting it in. Just a drop in between the lines. All right, any excess, just put there. And I'm gonna put some right 
there. All right. And let's put that right there. And then let's take a diode. It's a very technical word, diode. All right. And let's figure out where to put, which way it's going to work. Touch that to that. It's not lighting up. Spit over. That to that. Got to make sure that copper touches on all sides. There we go. So now you can see my finger light up. So I'm not going to lift it up because I don't want to mess around with it. But let's hold it down for a minute. Give it a time to stick. So it could be that there's, you know, different recipes for different glues. And if there's something to conductive in the Stamping Up fine line tip glue that makes it so it doesn't conduct the way, you know, it's a conductive blocker. I am not an electrician. Please see disclaimer below. So yeah, I'm going to hold it there. And I think it's better to hold it like this. So that my finger doesn't stick to it. Okay. And little by little start lifting up. See how it's staying on? So give it a couple more seconds. I just want it to glue, you know, I'm pressing down pretty hard because I really want it to stick. Okay. So there you go. What do you think? I have Houston, we have lights. All right. Yeah, that's great. All right, so we have our circuitry done. Yay. Only had to do it twice, holy moly. But I truly believe it's the glue. So let's go ahead and see it again. See, working perfectly. We're almost there, folks. Okay, so now what you want to do is you want to center this on this card. Okay, so I'm gonna tape it down with my tear tape. And I'm just gonna go here, here. I really kinda of wanna make sure it's secure. Cause it's kinda of heavy, it does have a battery attached to it. And using my pick a tool, let me pull these pieces up. Start down here. Down here. I hope this still is showing good on the video. All right, now let's take and center our. Center that in the middle. I think that looks good. Okay. And now we're going to take our top piece that we already stuck a hole in. And I want to pop it up. Because this is how it's going to go when I press right there. Look, the light's going to shine through it. So I'm going to put several dimensionals to keep this little guy out towards the edge. I'm going to put one, see where the battery is? I'm going to put an extra one here and an extra one here. Just to be sure that it doesn't fold down on itself because that would cause the battery to be being used while it's in the envelope or, you know, I had it in my purse once for a while to show somebody and didn't realize it was going off. But I think with this battery, you're going to have a long life. Okay. Now we're simply going to keep that folded, but not push down to where it's touching. And you're gonna line this up with that diode and it should line up in the center of your card. It can be off a little bit, the light shines. So even if you're off just a little bit, see? All right. Now I'm gonna pop this up, I think with some mini pop dots, or mini dimensionals. So, whoops. 
How funny. I have one on each side. How funny. That's hilarious. I was I was looking for the one that I had already done and couldn't find it. It was upside down. So I put one here and one there. And pop this up over here. Now if you wanted to, you could also make this yellow if you like that, so the yellow light comes out, or you can buy yellow lights. And I just want to put that right there. What do you think of that? Okay. And then what you want to do is use your sentiment. So I think I'm going to use the You Brighten My Path again. And This time, I think I'm going to do it on a lighter color, and I think I will use, I'll still use the chocolate chip. That's a retired color, but it's still my favorite brown, so I'm just going to put that right there. Okay, and now I'm going to glue this to this. And I like Tombow because you have time to move it around and get it just how you want it. All right. Now on the back, I'm going to put three pop dots, but one or dimensional, one right in the middle, one right next to it, and one right next to it. Okay. This gives you plenty of area that will push down when you push on the button. Then I'm going to go here and I'm going to push around. See, nothing happens, but when I know that that's where I need to push for my light to come on, that's where I want to put that. All right. So what do you think of that? Turns right on. Now you can take a little piece of paper and write, push on it, and just adhere it with a little tiny, so I call it a flag, I guess. Right. And then just write on it. P U S H. Put just a little tiny bit of glue, maybe the tear tape glue. Where's my tear tape? I just want the tiniest bit right on the edge. Okay. And then push that down. So that it's not really going to stick there and it won't tear your paper. Even touch it a couple of times to make it so it's not too sticky. And put that right there. You could do a better handwriting job than me. And then when they go to use it, they'll just pull it right off. But at least they know push. All right. And then to finish the inside, we simply do our bottom layer. We're going to do two layers. It just gives it that very finished look if you're going to put this much effort into a card. Okay. And again, all the dimensions and everything is listed below. All right. And then we have to stamp this one. I'm going to use the coffee pot because after this card, you definitely need, or maybe before this card, you should have had a cup of coffee. Put it right down in the corner. Oh, isn't that cute? And then you can either put a sediment in there or leave it blank. And once again, I'm going to pull my acetate over here and give me my blending brush and the crumb cake. I'm going to see if you use the, um, I should be stamping off too, you guys. Stamp off first and then on, and you won't get the circle smudge, smudges. But this way you're pulling that ink back off the acetate onto your paper. So it's a ink saver. All right, I think that looks great. All right, then we'll just simply put that on there. 
and our voila. We have our, and so you could put, you brighten my path on the outside, happy Father's Day on the inside. Um, there's my little push thing again. For graduation for a male, I used Adventure Weight. I just cut a flag and put it on the front. I don't have it with me, I should have taken a picture. And um, congratulations on the new beginning on the inside. Also, you could do, you know, life's a beautiful journey. Thanks for being a part of mine. But there's so many different options you can do for a mail card with this. Zippity push. Can you see that? I just love it. So I hope you enjoyed this card. Thank you for bearing through my trial and error. So again, just to elaborate, we're not going to use the Stamping Up Fine Light glue for this. Um, could be there's metals in it or some kind of something in it that is conductive. But with the E600 or Judykin's Diamond Glaze, it does not do conductivity. I know that you can also use hot glue. So you may just, if you have a hot glue well, you could dip it in a toothpick pick and just put a dot of hot glue there. And that's another great alternative. So if you have any questions, comment below. I'll get back to you as quickly as possible. And please comment, like, and subscribe. Comment below. Let me know what you thought of this card. Okay, and then hit the notification bell because I'll be posting a video of the most beautiful card. Well, not the most beautiful, but a really cute card using the Stampin' Up! Pansy Petals set in just a couple of days. For now, thank you for coming on this journey with me. Have a great weekend. See you next time.